Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today I wanted to shine a spotlight on a really kind of unknown Memphis guitar player that was extremely influential, that uh, was a huge influence on Reggie Young, Steve Cropper, and uh, Chips Bowman. So uh, his name was Clarence Nelson. And Clarence Nelson, uh, yeah, you know, played on a few, on, on, you know, on some cuts, but, uh, but his lasting influence uh, was actually people copying his guitar style and his guitar tone, which was on Telecaster. And uh, a lot could be argued that Clarence Nelson was one of the reasons why the Telecaster kind of became the R&B guitar, because people wanted to sound like Clarence, because they were being asked to imitate him which is what happened with Reggie Young. He was being asked to copy Clarence Nelson's guitar style. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about Clarence today and uh, I'll play a little bit of his, of his licks so you can kind of hear you know, what he did and also talk a little bit about how those things kind of showed up in later work um, by you know, like Reggie Young and others. So, all right, so while you're thinking about it, well, please go down in the corner and hit subscribe if you haven't done it already. And then I really appreciate you supporting the channel. There's uh, multiple ways. There's the tip jar in the description. Also, there's Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support the channel on a monthly basis. Also, you get the episodes early without commercials, and you get exclusive lesson content every month. So there you have it. All right, well, let's, let's just dive in. So Clarence Nelson was born in... 1934 in Galloway, Tennessee. He was African American, and he, you know, started learning how to play the guitar. And then around 1951, he moves into Memphis and he starts playing with Benjamin Branch. Okay, so there's a brief side story on Benjamin Branch. Benjamin Branch was a saxophonist and famous, you know, band leader in Memphis. And uh, kind of what what uh, Benjamin Branch is best known for is kind of a is kind of you know somewhat dark but but important uh, Benjamin Branch was the last person that spoke with Martin Luther King Jr. so when they were at the Lorraine Hotel Martin Luther King was uh, talking with Benjamin Branch about playing a version of Precious Lord when all of a sudden pow yeah so uh, and that, that information comes from the uh, Questlove's uh, documentary called S uh, Summer of Soul uh, that's, that's fantastic that you ought to watch that. That's wonderful guitar playing, musicianship, singers. You know, you get to see the Staples and, and uh, Stevie Wonder and all sorts of stuff. So, okay. So there you have Ben Branch. So, so Clarence Nelson was Ben Branch's guitar player all through the 50s and early 60s. And so I think that's where you get a lot of these guys seeing him and being influenced by him. So again, the main guitar players that, that copied him were Chips Moman. And let's talk about Chips for a moment. So Chips was most famous for being the producer and owner of American Studios. And that studio, of course, their in-house band was the Memphis Boys, or that's what they're called now, which was Reggie Young on guitar and Tommy Cogbill on bass and, and the, the rest of that group. They, uh, they produced all sorts of hits. Chips was also on the ground floor of Stax and had a disagreement with the owners because he thought he was going to be a partner with them. And they ended up uh, by, you know, having some type of settlement. And with the settlement, that's how Chips was able to, uh, to start American Studios. So Chips, um, you know, of course, would have seen Clarence uh, you know, probably you know, live you know, playing. And, and so you know, Clarence played a Telecaster, and he had this kind of wiry sound, and he didn't play like other guys. So here I'll just kind of play in some, you know, kind of Clarence Nelson isms. So one thing he would do is these uh, kind of uh, these low string licks that kind of, and he would do, do it this at different tempos, but you know, there'd be something like this. <laughs> He 
would also do these uh, interesting, you know, kind of chicken picking kind of thing. Yeah. Or he had this, uh, you know, kind of major third, minor third thing that he would do. Which, of course, uh, you know, Reggie Young took things like that and used it like on the, the end of the fireman or uh, even on Think I'll Just Stay Here and Drink played, you know, some of those type, type of licks. Uh, and then here's kind of another example of, of Reggie having to copy Clarence's style. So, so Clarence played on some sessions, on some early stack sessions and, and other, you know, things for high records and at Royal and maybe even some things at American. But um, apparently... He kind of played with a, uh, he had a vice grip with his hand. And because of that, sometimes he would kind of push things out of tune and sometimes he would get kind of out of time. So Chips would ask Reggie to play like Clarence and he would just say, give me some Clarence. And they knew exactly what that meant. And so, you know, so Reggie's version of, of you know, Clarence Nelson would be something like, um, a Man Needs a Woman by James Carr. So, you know, you have... You know, that was, that was Reggie imitating, uh, you know, Clarence and doing, doing that type of thing. Uh, yeah, these twangy, low-string licks. And, uh, yeah, and Chips, Chips imitated uh, Clarence with things like uh, Aretha Franklin's uh, Respect. So, if you didn't know that... Chips Moman played the iconic intro guitar part to uh, Aretha Franklin's uh, Respect. The That's Chips Moman. I know people have said it was Steve Cropper and Cornell Dupree and all these other cats, but it was Chips. And that was another you know, way in which that Fender Telecaster twangy R&B sound kind of became uh, the sound and what guys were imitating. So, and then also Steve Cropper. Steve Cropper imitated Clarence with, you know, some of the low string licks and some of the bending. It was all kind of trying to sound like him, trying to sound and play like him. And that's kind of why things drifted toward the Telecaster. It was because of Clarence Nelson. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just interesting in that you have this guitar player that's, hardly known yet he was a major influence on uh, some really important guitarist and it just kind of begs the question that we all have in our head and, and maybe and we can answer it it's like how, how many of us know some amazing singer some amazing songwriter or guitarist in our area of you know of the world that never is able to do anything there's never able to be have like some huge career and be on a major record label and it's like they're all over the place. And there are so many people that don't get that break or don't want that break. And, and they never you know, make it onto the big stage. And you know what? It's okay. But I think it's good to remember these people and for them to get their just due. And I think I'm hoping that through this that you can you know, realize that things don't just come out of the air and... Uh, you know, Clarence Nelson was an African American guitarist that you know played in the clubs. These uh, you know other guys saw him play, and uh, and they they loved his playing, and and they took it and they added it with other things and kind of created their own styles of playing. Because I mean, you have like Reggie Young, who certainly took stuff from uh, from Clarence, but also mixed it with things like. You know, Bobby Womack, he, he took a lot of, you know, a lot of licks and, and stylistic things from him. And then other things that he took from, from Chet Atkins. Like if you take Reggie Young, you know, if you took like Son of a Preacher Man, it's like you almost have the influence of Chet Atkins and Clarence Nelson. You have this. But then the, you know, that kind of thing is more Clarence. But then the first part with the, the kind of the sixth and the open strings and stuff, that's very Chet Atkins. So it's really um, Memphis meets Nashville. So, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to shine a spotlight. And it's here that I need to give a big shout out to Red Kelly. So Red Kelly has done quite a bit of research on Clarence. And, uh, you know, and sometimes he's 
ran into a, a song that he thought was Clarence, and then it ended up being Reggie imitating him and other things. And he, even when other artists from that era thought it was Clarence, and it wasn't. But uh, you know, Red Kelly deserves you know the credit for uh, for doing research on him. And so I'm going to put links to his website on the, the the articles that he's written about Clarence and the, the recordings. So he has. You know where he's got uh, the recordings that that Clarence has played on, and then even recordings where other guys are imitating him. Uh, Clarence, uh, you know, kind of went on to play with uh, William Bell, who was another you know Stax artist. Who, of course, uh, he had one of the early hits, "You Don't Miss Your Water," and then he wrote the song um, "Born Under a Bad Sign" with Booker T. Jones, that of course was a big hit for Albert King and Cream and others. Um, yeah, so uh, Clarence played with, with William Bell for a while, and then he uh, kind of did more local stuff in the Memphis area, and then he passed away from a, a bout of cancer in 1986. So uh, also, you know, just want to reference, I, uh, I interviewed, you know, Reggie Young about a year or two before he passed away, and I asked him about Clarence, and he had just indicated that Clarence was a, a great and inventive player, that uh, again, he at times wasn't real studio friendly because of you know sometimes he would be out of tune and such, and so you know he would be asked to, to imitate him. So yeah, I hope you'll do some more digging and also just think about uh, you know these guitarists that uh, their legacy is their influence. They they never made it famous, but they uh, but they influenced other players so much. So. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.